on your might. So your cop ways came through again. Impressive. Let's see what you got. Thought I felt a special sign coming off this one. I'll just have egg pop in a frequency dial here, and we should be set. Rarely has there been a more apt pairing of man and transceiver. This is a portent of great success. All right, Lord Fairer, we're ready to do this. I have to warn you, though, once we commit, there's no stopping until we've seen it all the way through. No pauses, no second chances. This is our shot. You got it. So any cop prep you got to do, you do it now. We'll wait if we have to. Don't sweat that. Egg fan something down near the water lock. Some maniac abandoned the perfectly good power source. That maniac is obviously you, which makes the power source your half-sunken Caprice 40. Right. That's your call then. How should I know? It's up to everyone to know their own needs. At the very least, you should make sure you're wearing a good pair of gloves. Personally, I'm gonna make sure I've got a steady supply of prep tired, Andy. The speed is to get you through the tedious, detail-oriented parts of the work. Maybe this freak will spot you some. Hope you don't get any little wires crossed because you lost your concentration, Mr. Clean and Sober. Rest of the crew has got to stay here. Can't afford to let the beat drop right as we're getting off the ground. Much love to my hardcore antenna brothers. Good luck, guys. Try to squeeze in a promo spot while you're on air. We've got to start putting the word out. Back across the water lock. At least we are getting our exercise in today. You can grab that amplifier, officer. And you start spawning up those cables. Maybe we can get it all in one go. Just plug that in there, would ya? It's done. I believe we are ready. Yeah, as ready as we're gonna be. Grab one of these can sets, both of ya. I've got it rigged so that we can all listen, but only your cop talk will broadcast. No idea what we're gonna hear when I turn this thing on, so be prepared for anything. Trick is to keep transmitting your request until the big bad acknowledges ya. You got that? Good. We're live in two, one. A soft rustling between your ears, a winterscape with fast falling snow. Every light switch, every motor carriage, every doorbell, tea kettle, and radio in Martinez, all mingled with electrical interference caused by scattered thunderstorms over ozone. Hey, no man! We're waiting on ya! You're all alone out there, wandering a blasted heath, calling out to the night. But there is no reply, except for the buzzing of invisible machines. The lieutenant looks up at you, with a nervous glance. He is nervous for your sake, of course, but also his own. Looking at him now, with both hands on his headphones, you see very briefly what the lieutenant must have been like when he first joined the RCM. Then he turns to you. He gives you 
a half-smile, along with an almost imperceptible nod of encouragement. Give it another go! Nein, Liebling. Unseren Jungen nach Redepost. Einen dieser Dinger. Marianne hat mir erzählt, dass Oscar nicht mehr derselbe ist, seit er auf einem Luftschiff aus Gras zurückgekommen ist. Natürlich halten wir die Psychologen für vollkommen normal. Aber sie hat das Gefühl, seit seiner Rückkehr mit einem Fremden zusammenzuleben. He can't make out a word of this gibberish. The rustling of dry autumn leaves, waves breaking at a distance, a thousand wings beating at once. Liebling, bitte. Er ist unser einziges Kind. Er kann doch auch nächstes Jahr zur Akademie gehen. Keep trying. We'll get through these radio spookers eventually. Again. It's gone now. A slight frizzle at the point where your neck meets your spine. Something about the lieutenant's words directed at you, but not you. Mention what? I didn't say anything, detective. Someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. An uncomfortable silence falls over the connection. It's been a long winter. I can assure you it's not my twin brother, though it certainly does sound like me. Sounds like your partner's being haunted by his past self. Or maybe he's trying to warn himself. From the future, most like. I don't know much about radios. It's just a little bit of pale interference, detective. A little eerie, perhaps, but perfectly explicable. Outwardly, the lieutenant exudes reassurance. But you can sense a lingering doubt in his voice. Natürlich halten ihn die Psychologen für vollkommen normal. You just have to embrace the spookiness. Now give it another go. But someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. Dubois, please acknowledge. Liebling, bitte. Er ist unser einziges Kind. Where's your Please, I don't need The signals are getting increasingly mixed. Plucking Archer's signal from this will be like isolating a single strand from a tangle of hair. This isn't looking good. The radio spookers are winning. Don't know. If we can't get around the interference, we're in deep trouble. Hold on. I think Gag gave me some sort of checklist. Says here, main step, volume to the max. That's not too helpful. Okay, it also says, inspect connections for hardcore clarity. So let's try that. My guess, you climb up the centaur, man. See if there's anything obviously interfering with them. Maybe you've got some technical law science. This isn't exactly your area of expertise, though. Someone has been maintaining it. Something about this setup seems dimly familiar, but you'll be damned if you know what you're supposed to do about it. Images of your body smashed against the pavement flood your mind. This is dangerous. Maybe you break an arm, maybe you break your neck. Could go either way, honestly. But that's what the Invalids Fund is for. So don't worry about it for now. Your gloves give you a solid grip on the metal bar. This feels pleasingly familiar. 
you don't exactly cut a lithesome figure, but after several moments of scrambling, you manage to hoist yourself atop the monument. That performance was frankly an embarrassment. The connection itself is nothing more than a little braid of exposed wire wrapped about the hoof of the horse. A copper fetter, it cannot slip. The whole monument is covered in a thin but durable layer of oil and grime. It's obvious no one has cleaned it in years. Well, what's it look like? His imperious gaze leads you naturally to his outstretched hand, which, for some reason, strikes you as sadly empty. You can't help but feel that saber you picked up might just give this old king a little more panache and better reception. Come on, kings and sabers are so played out. There's a better way. To your surprise, the saber's hilt fits quite snugly in the statue's hand. The king cuts quite the triumphal figure now. There is no way that is going to make any difference. Nah, every bit helps. We need this antenna to be as hardcore as humanly possible. This faithful steed is in nearly as poor a condition as its rider. The sky is grey and overcast. Somehow, the raindrops seem to fall more slowly from this angle. Through the scrim, you can just make out the shadow of Coalition Warship Archer a few kilometers to the east. Headset guides your hands as much as your hands guide the bronze horse head. It's almost like you're hearing through the horse itself. Looks like it's working. Keep going. Just a bit more. Nein, Liebling. The signal is clear. The storm has passed. This is another voice, a live voice on the other end of this invisible bridge you've established. Try it now. This is Coalition Warship Archer. We are acknowledging and accepting it. There it is! The Big Bad! Now be quick! I'll keep us aligned as long as I can! This is it. You're finally getting to speak with those who hold real power. And by that, we mean the ones with the guns and the warships. There is so much you wish you could ask. Your efforts have bought you some time. But you can't forget what you're really here for. Please be advised that you are speaking on a public frequency. What is your request? You are currently speaking with Coalition Worship Archer, flagship of Insurcom forces in Revachon. No, the captain of the Archer is deeply classified intelligence. We are the second signaler. Our name is not important. All you need to know is that we hold the position of second signaler aboard the Archer. You 
really don't have the faintest guess what her name could be. You were never very good at this sort of thing. There's something in the way she refers to herself, always with the first person plural. A deliberate blurring of the boundary between herself and the institution she represents. Not to mention the airborne artillery platform she works on. Her every word is backed up by the most powerful ordinance available. It's a great honor and responsibility. In addition to monitoring public frequencies, we are tasked with maintaining some of the most sensitive communication equipment about the Arctic. Oh, it's fine. Hold on. You can tell she has more to say. Oh, yes. We could always use more time off. <laughs> Quite good. We enjoy all the standard benefits for moral interforces on active duty assignments. Excellent healthcare, foreign service pay, a fully funded pension system, six weeks paid leave, bilingual childcare, vocational certification credits. Really, it's quite a good career. Yes, of course. There is no higher calling than serving humanity. Mm, that's difficult to say. We have a very particular view from our observation platform up here. Oh, it looks quite lovely from here. From our part, we see rolling hillsides, a public park filled with grand oak trees, men and women going about on horses. Ah, oh, there are children playing by a small pond. The homes and gardens are quite beautiful, very near like those in certain areas of Messina. We cannot say for certain. East it must be. We've only recently been deeded to the Archer, so we are still learning the names of all the many districts. She needs to see you down here. That's the only way she'll really get what you're about. Martinez, Martinez. That is to the west, yes? Stand by a moment. We are adjusting our viewfinder. Yes, we are looking at the river now. There are small islands in the middle of it. It's very nice, actually. Interesting. The west of the city looks very different from the east. There's a large motorway dividing it nearly in half. This must be the 881, no? It appears to go on for quite a while. There's a heavily industrialized district that seems to abut most of my town. But now we seem to be quite turned about. We'll have to consult a map in the future. Now, was there something else? Liebling, bitte. Er ist unser einziges Kind. The signal's weakening. I guess you've got about two questions left. Come again? We're picking up more interference. We can assure you, it is coming as soon as possible. Oh, most likely. Though, of course, it depends on the contingency. You must understand, the moral intern is responsible for ensuring the continuance and flourishing of mankind for the next 3,000 years. The planning division must account for a great many possible outcomes and chances. Fortunately, we have contingency spreads to help guide our decision making. Of course, there is no one spread that can reasonably account for all these possible events. That's impossible to say. It may be that Ravishal has a great role to play, or no role at all. That is the nature of contingency. But didn't the Wild Pines representative say that Ravishal would resolve history? You must understand, when we speak of contingency spreads, we are talking about the most fantastically complex data visualization human beings are capable of producing, with thousands of events, from elections and wars to natural disaster or scientific miracles, and millions of possible outcomes. It may be the case that, under certain scenarios, Revachal is vitally important, as it was during the collision landings in 08. It may also be the case, in many other equally plausible scenarios, that the Revachal is simply another once great city, like countless others throughout history. Impossible to say for certain. Human beings are notoriously bad at predicting all the different ways events might unravel. For this reason, responsibility for developing contingency spreads is only assigned to highly trained analysts working with advanced radio computers and a steady supply of drones. Acknowledged. 
We are at your disposal. This is it. Final question time. I can already feel our alignment getting shaky. Is everything all right? We lost the connection for a moment. Acknowledge. To reach the committee, all you need to do is fill out the appropriate request form and submit it to the liaison for public affairs. If the liaison accepts your request, you will be invited to address the committee at their next quarterly public hearing. We believe the next hearing is scheduled for July. She's got to be jerking your chain, right? You can't wait that long. We're afraid. That is quite impossible, Lieutenant Dubois. We cannot transfer you to the committee because we are not entrusted with that responsibility. We are simply the second signal. Then, why are you wasting time with her? You should demand to speak with who's really in charge. You know, that is simply not how the command pyramid works. We can no more overrule our chief signaler than you could overrule your own precinct captain. You're getting out tangled by the big bad. Time to try something else. Not a problem. If this is a time-sensitive matter, you may file an emergency address request with the liaison for public affairs. They typically respond within a few weeks. What part of need to reach the committee doesn't she understand? Time to lay it all out. We will hear your request, Lieutenant Dubois. Although we must inform you that the committee does not typically intervene in personal matters. That's only because they haven't heard about your problems yet. So, you're experiencing acute memory loss. We don't see how this is the committee's business. Ah, oh, good God, here we go. We're afraid we don't understand at all. What does this something have to do with your lost memory? We are sorry to hear of your loss, but personal tragedy is quite beyond the purview of the committee of responsibility. Now, please excuse us while we update the receiving frequency. This connection will be cleared in four. Quick, hang up on her first. One, après le monde, le gris. And the line goes quiet. The lieutenant gives a long sigh as he removes his headphones. He looks up at you. I think it's best for you to climb off the statue now, detective. Your real work is done here. There's a damp cold running up the insides of your thighs. Your legs have grown stiff. You, you look around. The strike breakers are still shouting their slogans and waving their hand-painted signs. Beneath you, the lieutenant and the speed freak have begun disconnecting a few cables. You could stay a while longer if you wanted. Out on the bay, a pair of dinghies bob and roll in the waves. The breeze drags the voices of the fishermen toward the plaza. Faint and indecipherable, further out, a few dirty icebergs drift to and fro. Further still, at the outer edge of your recognizance, the ancient ruins of the sea fort lay piled on the horizon. Everything all right, detective? Listen, I understand that you're disappointed that things did not turn out how you might have hoped. But you did accomplish your task. You reached the coalition. I must admit I didn't seriously think you could do it. But you've proved me wrong. Now come on. We still have a long day ahead of us. About time. You grab that amp. Forget the cables. Need to leave some evidence of our antenna to inspire future generations. <sighs> What's one more trip across the waterlock? Alright, cop man. We've held up more than our share of this collaboration. I hope you recognise how much the hardcore underground came through for you. If you want to show your appreciation, we can still use your help. Egg is the one to talk to. Hardcore! Mutual aid! So 
sure. You have to say that now. That's all right. I'll put this tech away later. Think there's an extra cancer. In case you want to grab a souvenir or something. I don't think anyone will miss it. Wow. So someone's been a little boring. Yes, my standard liege. Someone's seen all sorts of wild ideas pop off and thought, I'll take the boring one. The regular, please. The brown. You? I wouldn't worry about that. See? You're so regular and vinyl brown, he doesn't even want to talk to you about it. No need to be defensive. The regularity, the brownness, the cut and dry have their appeal. Of course you do. Let's get right to it. My Lord's Cobo type is regular cop. I'll let everyone know. I'll send out a telefax. Yes, the type of cop you are, sire. Think of it as a caste, a class even, a nation of regular law officials that you belong to. It comes, of course, with the usual benefits. Done and done. No actual communiques will be sent, of course. That would be too dramatic. What is it? Okay, but think you can ask him to turn the volume down a bit? Just in case. Maximum! Maximum is the only way! I know, I know it is, but could you please turn it down just this instance? Just this one time? Maximum is not the only way, okay? Pump it to the brick! Pump it to the hard master! There's no other way! Glue style! Glue style? Okay, there literally is no other way. The mixing desk is glued to maximum. See? He pumps it to the hard master. It's hopeless. Of course it is. Yeah! Permanent enlightenment! Ray of sound! Never mind then. Let's get on with our project. I'm going to unmute the speakers on a count of five. Everyone ready? Egghead pumps his hand up in the air, waiting for the beat to drop. Born ready. Ready. I'm ready if you two are detectives. The lieutenant nods stoically. Not so stoically. His hand moves to the gun holster. Suddenly, your palms are sweaty. The church seems cold and large. Somehow, there's tightness in your chest. Anxiety. What? Five, four, three, two, one. Mute disengaged. No wind outside. No waves. No floorboards creaking. Total, continuous silence. This is unnatural. The woman looks around. In the silence, you see dust move on the floorboards. The driver of the speaker vibrates in the air and then stops. Plasterwork begins to crumble down the walls. In the silence, a low hum starts creeping up your spine. It's a song inside you, not in the speakers, not in the room. 
a great bass sigh in the basement of your mind. Slowly, it builds until the air around you starts to vibrate. It's out there now, in the world, made manifest. It will devour everything, the floorboards, the glass, the streets and people. Nothing will remain. Guys, what's going on? This fragile world is about to break. It's getting louder. In the basins, the water looks like it's boiling. Hosiana, mother of Mega! In his mind, a tidal wave approaching from afar, swallowing entire coastlines on its way. Salvation. He's peaking. The worst high he's ever been on. Beauty and the beat! The future of dance! Planetary! No, Egg! It's the window! In the corner of your eye, the lieutenant steps aside, cautiously, his eyes searching for a possible evacuation route. The window is going to come down! No, the roof! Cracks appear on the stained glass window. Cracks run up the wooden pillars in the dark. Come down to us! Love! Below it, all the base grows, like the jaws of a giant compressor gnawing on metal and wood. It does not sound benevolent at all. It's shaking the building's foundation. The floor twists. A great pulse arises in your flesh. That's it. I'm muting it. Oh! I want to feel the heat with somebody! Shit! It doesn't stop. A seal? Have you? signal's passed. It's not in here. It's... In the mixing desk now, building into a positive feedback loop. This is it. A great roar. The vault of the roof twists above you. Glass shatters somewhere near the door. It's coming down. And then it stops. Totally and utterly. As if there never was a sound. Only your ears still ring from the shock. Everybody is staring at Egghead, holding a dangling cable in his hand. A black three-pin connector. Egg. I pulled the plug. It was getting too hardcore. You did good, Egg. Most of the place seems to be intact. Fucking hell. Programmer lady, tell me you were recording that. Four years. Twenty-two people. Millions of reals. All that time, this is what we were up against. Just erased it. Suriswolf isn't gonna believe this. Yeah, but did you record it, though? It was dope. I think we can use it. Yes, Andre. I recorded it. Damn, I, I need to send some letters now. Thank you all for doing this. Eggman, you too. And you, officer, I don't know what we've discovered, but I know what it sounds like now. That's the start. It was very hard not to. I think you're right. There is something going on here. And you need to be very careful with it. I promise, officer. We will not play it again. It was mathematical information from the anomaly presented as a waveform. That's what it was technically. Theoretically, I have no idea. I've never even heard of anything like this. A voice seems muffled in the silent church. It's your ears adjusting after the exposure. Yes, our lead designer. And maybe some of the producers too. And some of the writers. If they're sober enough to open a transmission. They need to hear. That it wasn't her fault. Or theirs. They need to hear about this. Don't worry, I won't send the recording. Although I doubt they have the speakers to produce the frequency anyway. Stay here. I'm going to stay here with these lunatics. Send letters, maybe meet Suliskov. Also devise further measurements. I want you to know that's totally chill with us. I don't care, but thank you anyway. That's the best she can manage for Andre. It's quite a lot in truth. For her, at least. Now, 
I have a theory to come up with. Some kind of preliminary explanation to all this. Or the letter will sound like I've lost my mind. Yes. And we have to get back to stabilizing Martinez. Instead of demolishing it with loud bass noise of unknown origins. Some tiny hard thing lets go in your stomach. You're still alive. You have an explanation for all this. Somewhere deep in you, you know. The person you were knows. until it's the only thing left. It starts compressing itself and everything around it. Completely fills up the headspace. Extreme! Ah! Ah! But how? What about the compressor? The one with the spiky hair was setting up. To achieve some sort of parallel processing. Side chain the beat. Listen, you can use the compressor to select between which track it's compressing, either the auxiliary signal or the main input from the tape. Make it alternate between the signals. The compressor controls the gain based on the level of the signal on the aux side chain input. It will allow maintaining a loud sound without peaks that fill up all the headspace. Side chaining it, you said? Then, he puts on his headphones and his eyes go wide. Wider than they've ever gone on drugs. He starts jumping up and down with bliss in total silence, still listening to his headphones. Hey, what did you do to Egghead Cop Man? Did you break him? Are you ready, pussy? Noid straightens his back, ready for the beat. I was born ready, Egg. on the stage, intensely waving his hand in the air. This is beauty! This is life! What in the world is going on? The way melody and bass flow together, it's unnatural. Your body is taking a beating from the low frequencies crashing over you. It's making you feel alive again. Introducing the ultimate sound! God damn it! This dance club idea might just work out. DeLorean Church! The place to be! Pump it! 
pump it! Who will be the innocence of hardcore melodic dance music? Oh, hey, man. It's good to see you. Goodbye. Close your eyes and vacate your skull, leaving your brain to wonder, where did that little flattering light go? Total darkness. You sink down the darkest fathoms of your own personal deep. Vertebrate by vertebrate, through the unformed skulls of your mind. Here it will begin. Oh, don't worry. The music's still there. It's you who is gone. Nothing. Just the immaculate silence of your spinal fluid. Who fucking cares? God. Where is your God? I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Every vertebrate in your spine is an unformed skull ready to pop up and replace the old one. Like shark teeth. The one you're currently in has a little brain forming in it. Waiting for its turn. To rule the world! In the spinal cord! Good. Because from what I can see, it's about to bust a move. Foolhardy, do you even know what's happening on the surface? Maybe a thousand years have passed. Or maybe you started spazzing out like two seconds ago. With your eyes still closed, the first thing you feel all the way back in the pivoting darkness of your own torso, is warmth. You have become a triumph of rhythmoplastics, somewhere in a smelly wooden church on the coast of Revachon. The wounds from the war you waged on your body are healing, twist by twist, turn by turn. You have become a flawless intimate mechanism, a flesh and bone approximation of the throb coming from the speaker setup of the one called Eggheads, entirely rigidly imbecilic, without pity or fear. Free from self awareness, no deliberation, only, and I mean only, execution. Oh my god! No way! With is real to real mixer blasting the anthem of a future that will never come. The young man observes your moves for a second. He throws a screwdriver and a bunch of drill chucks into the corner and explodes into dance. What he lacks in sharpness, he more than makes up for in violent enthusiasm. What's going on here? Did he put? This is clearly a Code 31 emergency. The lieutenant squeezes the bridge of his nose. The lights reflect off his glasses. He's obviously having trouble adjusting to this new reality. A Code 31 emergency? Really? The lieutenant crosses his arms with a bemused look. What's happening? Who's the one in charge? You are. Are you kidding? 
kidding me? Get my what on? Sheesh, okay. Okay, a psychopath. I see what you're doing there. It's jacked up footwork. Press on. Um, is that Ubi for dancing? Nah, it's not Ubi for. It's hardcore. Yeah. Whatever. Oh yeah? I did 15 years in the juvenile crime unit. I can do age inappropriate. Now, check this shit out. The lieutenant begins to heal him the church floor with such intensity. It's reasonable to fear. He'll kick a hole right through it, causing the floor to crack and the pillars to collapse, bringing the church roof down on all of you. It doesn't look like he'd give a shit either. up and down, then assumes the same dance pattern, embellishing it with some sort of waving motion. The authority of the law is clearly a question. The young woman lifts her headphones up slightly and raises her chin, looking at you expectantly. A few? Aren't you going to dance? No. Recording. The lead program throws the other young woman knowing glance before turning her attention back to her own body. She's still at her mainframe, pressing buttons, reading the printouts, but she started putting her head over to the music. The dynamic motion of your flailing body is bordering on the extreme. You're going off the charts. You feel as if turning on the hyperdrive would be a point of no return. Feels almost melancholy. Are you sure you have the entire posse along for this? Here we go again! Hardcore fills the air! The sound above my hair! The what now? The above my hair, man! Okay, this is too imbecile. Excuse me. The music pounds through the hall of an old stave church on the coast of Martinez. Several figures are lost in the beats. Their bodies pull this way and that by sound. One of them officer of the RCM suddenly stops. He appears disoriented, then starts shaking violently, no longer in rhythm with the music. The beats that you had all fired up just a moment ago seem overwhelming. Alongside it, you'll lay here in complete darkness. Then consciousness will slowly begin to return. But you already know. It rare. Waking up, you see the lieutenant talking to the young people. A worried look on his face. I've seen this thing happen before to people partying too hard. It looks pretty dangerous, though. Nah, man, don't worry. He's mainly dehydrated. It's a regular party reaction, yeah? Look! He's awake! What happened? Are you feeling all right? Give him a moment. See? This is why you need distilled water. You might be imagining it, but it feels like Egghead turned the volume down. Such is his respect. Man! Now! Now! Man! Now! Now imagine if we could do that, right? But with like a thousand people. End of human development. Mission complete. All right. You're absolutely beat. Muscles relaxed and feet like noodles underneath. Goodbye, officer. Arno van Eyck. Okay. So Egghead is clearly not Van Eyck in disguise. Van Eyck is an Oranese disc jockey, but those people get around, especially in Rivershaw, in the clubs on Boogie Street. Perhaps he stayed here for a short stint and discarded part of the song he was working on, just threw it away, and then it ended up in the Orthorn tree. But why? Did he think it was retrograde? It wasn't. Perhaps he caught a glimpse of the future and did not want for it to arrive just yet. Perhaps the city whispered the top line to him, and he was frightened by it. 